So my name is Mary McGowan. I'm CEO of Women Heart, the National Coalition for Women with Heart Disease. And I'm here to talk with you about how Women Heart is partnering with physicians and hospitals to advance women's heart health um, and improve patient outcomes. So my presentation is broken out into two parts. The first part is just a very a quick overview of the organization, and then it gets into the details about the partnership. So basically, Women Heart was started 16 years ago. Um, there were three women uh, in the age of, of 40s, and they all suffered a heart attack. And More Magazine was doing a uh, interview uh, for a magazine article that they were writing. And in, of course, they each had a different personal story, but the underlying themes were very consistent. They did not know heart disease was their number one health threat. Um, they had all been misdiagnosed, um, and they had feelings of fear and isolation, and at the time, very little information and support. So the writer of the article said, gee, the three of you should really get together and do something about this. Um, and they did. And they launched Women Heart. We're currently a 501c3 and a $5 million budget. Um, so who we are, we're the nation's only patient-centered organization serving the 43 American women living with or at risk of heart disease. All of the photos, by the way, are, are women volunteers. These are women living with heart disease throughout the presentation. So what we do, we educate, we support, and we advocate. We educate women on the importance of taking charge of their heart health. We do this through regional, national conferences, publications, um, webinars, uh, and many other um, activities. We support women living with heart disease, and I'm going to talk a good deal about this when I get further into the presentation. And we're located in Washington, D.C., and we advocate for research funding and policies that meet the needs of women um, with heart disease. Uh, we do a number of congressional briefings. We actually train women living with heart disease, the legislative process they go to Capitol Hill, meet with their members, and we work with sev several agencies, including FDA, NIH, um, and others. So why we're different, we refer to ourselves as the boots on the ground or sometimes the red high heel stilettos in the fight against heart disease, um, but very grassroots oriented organization. So why we do what we do, I know you all are very familiar with the re reasons for this, but I just wanted to focus on the, uh, on the bottom two, disparities in care. Women are still much less likely to receive uh, the treatment according to guidelines, and women are uh, still underrepresented in clinical trials, and this is an area that we are putting tremendous focus on um, as we move forward. Um, so our key programs, um, our main program is the Science and Leadership Symposium. It takes place at the Mayo Clinic every year. Women living with heart disease from around the country actually apply to attend this training. Uh, they get a little training about the science of heart disease, but they get extensive uh, training on how to be a community educator and how to establish and run peer-led support groups at their hospitals and their communities. Um, once they're trained, they then return to their hospital and they establish these groups, and they become what we call Women Heart Champions. Um, we also have a red bag of courage. You see it in the photo there. It's a beautiful red bag, but more importantly, it's filled with information specific to women living with heart disease, and our Women Heart Champions distribute over 100,000 of these bags on an annual basis. We also do a number of educational events, one of our um, most popular is called Women Hard at Work, where these women go into corporate America and they actually educate employers and employees on the leading cause of death uh, for women. We have a number of patient support uh, programs, including our support networks. These are monthly meetings that take place across the nation. Sister Match is a telephone-based program. Uh, we connect women uh, by the phone, uh, and it's a very successful support uh, mechanism. Um, heart scarves, people from around the nation actually knit red scarves. They donate them to the organization and our Women Heart Champions give them to women newly diagnosed with heart disease with a comforting note and information. We have an online support community of over 18,000 patients living with heart disease, and they connect and talk on an ongoing basis. In terms of advocacy, um, our Advocacy Institute is our training that we do of women. We also uh, created the 10Q report. Uh, this was in collaboration with the Society for Women's Health Research. It's the top 10 questions that need to be addressed uh, in the event that there was more uh, government funding regarding women, uh, women's heart health. And then the annual Winger Awards. Um, we, this is a very high level gathering of about 375 people every year in Washington, DC. It's the only national event that honors those who are doing extraordinary things to advance women's heart health. 
Women Heart Today, 35,000 members. We have over 700 women who have gone through the training at the Mayo Clinic. We're currently running 130 support networks and we're in 39 states. Um, and we are one of the four founding partners of the Heart Truth Campaign and the Red Dress Campaigns. Here's a listing of our scientific advisory council. I know many of you know uh, many of these esteemed leaders. They're very entrenched in our organization. They actually serve as faculty for all of our programmatic activities. They review and approve all of our educational materials. They actually even approve our corporate partnerships. So we're very fortunate in the fact that we are sought out by the national media on a regular basis, and those are just a few recent examples. Um, we also collaborate with many partners. Um, here you see some government uh, li uh, logos. We're working with Janet Wright uh, at the CDC on the Million Hearts campa campaign. Um, the Department of Health and Human Services asked us to be the lead partner on the 911 Make the Call, Don't Miss a Beat campaign. This was a campaign launched two years ago after studies showed that women were much less likely to dial 911 in the event that they thought that they were having a heart attack. It was very successful and it was relaunched this year in Spanish. Um, but we also work closely with the American College of Cardiology Association of Black Cardiologists and other groups. We also collaborate with many medical uh, device partners, pharmaceutical partners. They provide support to us to do our education and awareness campa campaigns on a number of different topics. We're working very now on uh, two extensive campaigns on heart failure and uh, cholesterol and familial hypercholesterolemia. Um, corporate supporters, it might surprise you when I say that Burlington, as in Burlington Stores, is our largest partner. Um, just working with them over the last four years, it has raised just under $5 million for our organization. They do a, a point of sale during Heart Month, um, and uh, with those funds, we were able to launch a Hispanic outreach program. So all of our materials are now in Spanish, and we have a Spanish section on our website. So that's a 50,000 foot view level um, of the organization um, that I just wanted to provide with you before I uh, spoke more intimately about this partnership that we are doing across the nation with hospitals um, and physicians called the Women Heart National Hospital Alliance. So basically, this partnership is to advance women's heart health, is comprised of hospitals that are committed to providing the full spectrum of women's cardiovascular care and it seeks to ensure that women, heart disease patients in every community have access to education and patient support um, and services that are needed. And it helps to position and differentiate hospitals um, in gender uh, cardiovascular care. Um, so it's also an opportunity, I'm gonna talk in a little bit about the, our first annual meeting that we did with this, but it's a way to connect hospitals nationally to engage on women's heart health um, and enrich services provided to women. So the way that this works is when the hospital joins, um, they actually recruit patients to attend the, our science and leadership training at the Mayo Clinic. The women get the training, they return back to the hospital, they then become community educators um, in, for the hospital and women heart in those communities and they establish and run peer-led support groups um, for other patients. Um, and then the hospitals typically provide the space, marketing and clinical support as needed. Um, we continue to educate these women on an ongoing basis through additional conferences and educational webinars. Um, it's a very tight network that develops with these women. And we also provide um, a biannual in-person uh, education update meeting where all of these support network coordinators who, are estab who have established these groups, they get together um, in Washington, D.C. So in May, we'll be bringing 150 of them together. And it's a great conference in the fact that they talk about best practices in hospitals, what's working, what's not working, in terms of advancing uh, women's heart health from the patient level. Um, and then also, we also encourage um, hospitals to engage their staff in all of the benefits associated with this program. Um, and um, like the Heart Scarves program, Sister Match, and all of the educational uh, opportunities that we provide. Because again, with the numbers of one in three women with heart disease, there are many hospital staff um, women um, who can benefit from these programs. The other thing that we do is we set up a, a conference call and go over a very extensive membership tool that we give to the hospital. We've basically taken what we've learned over the last 16 years supporting women, uh, patients, um, and uh, branding ourselves um, with regards to women and heart disease, and we give that to the hospital. 
It has a whole host of information all the way down to um, templated press releases that hospitals use when they join our program um, and there's a lot of local media that has resulted from that. Um, one of the things that our support networks use in their meetings are, are called educational modules. Um, these have been developed in uh, collaboration with the Minneapolis Heart Institute. They each come with a facilitator guide, patient education handout, and video. Very professionally developed, so these support networks are really focused on secondary prevention. Um, we're developing a library of 30. We have 20 that have been developed, and you can see a listing there on the different topics. Um, in addition, um, one of the things that uh, is very helpful and of great value to hospitals that we hear is that hospitals can co-brand all of our educational materials. This is very helpful for hospitals that are getting ready to launch a women's heart uh, center or program or who have recently launched a program. Again, all of our materials have been vetted by our scientific advisory council, so the hospitals don't have to reinvent the wheel and create um, a, a library of materials. Um, and actually, one of the things that's most popular is we have a prescription pad. Um, it looks like a prescription pad, and we give them to physicians, and the physicians just um, rip off one of the, the sheets and gives it to their patients as a way to connect their patient to our organization um, because we can really help that patient with a lot of their questions and have them engage with other women um, living with heart disease. Um, so they find that's very helpful. Um, but we also uh, provide, as part of the benefit, um, technical assistance to develop a one-day women's um, heart health education symposium at the hospital. And this last bullet was something that was recently added. In doing presentations to hospitals, we kept getting the comments that, gee, you're doing extraordinary work in terms of educating patients and supporting patients. Is there anything that you can do uh, working with us for our clinicians. So I brought that back to our scientific advisory committee who um, the SAC now is doing quarterly educational webinars um, for clinicians of hospital member hospitals. Um, last month, Dr. Nanette Winger did one on pregnancy and heart disease. Um, and we heard from many of the hospitals how they're now um, hosting these in their auditoriums and inviting um, physicians in to view these. And we're working also to get these to be um, CME um, credited educational opportunities. Um, so here's a uh, slide that just talks about the how they add value. Um, over 6,400 hours of community outreach were conducted, and more than 50% of coordinators have been uh, credited with saving someone's life um, as a result of their outreach. And there's just a sample of how um, hospitals um, market this program in their newsletters and communications. So here's, of course, a map of the United States. Um, this highlights uh, with the red hearts of every state that we are running support in. Um, we just added three more states um, just this month. So West Virginia and uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas are now um, as uh, part of the unit as well. So we're very um, pleased about that. Here's a listing of our National Hospital Alliance members. It's actually um, two slides. Um, and um, just wanted to take this time to thank uh, Boca Raton Regional Hospital, who's one of our founding members of this uh, program. Um, and also to say recently we received a very large grant for capacity building. Um, and what this did was it afforded us the opportunity to bring on eight hospitals, but the criteria was that they had to um, be serving very high percentages of underserved women. So we're thrilled because we just brought on our first veterans hospital. So we're, this is gonna be a pilot to help support veteran women uh, from around the nation. We also just brought on our first Native American um, hospital uh, from Chickasaw Nation in Oklahoma. So we're very excited about that as well. So this program is really helping us get into communities where there are a lot of underserved women, where quite frankly, we never had the um, opportunity to do that before. So um, we brought together all of the hospitals uh, in the membership uh, for an, our first annual meeting. It was very, very um, successful. Um, had Dr. Sharon Hayes from Mayo Clinic, who um, started the women's program at the Mayo Clinic, who presented, um, as well as many other um, presenters. And then they attended that annual Winger Awards event um, that evening and, of course, were highlighted as, as um, 
as members. I just want to conclude here just highlighting very quickly the benefits of the, uh, of the, to the community, so patient uh, benefits. We um, actually did a survey um, of the 6,000 women who participate every month in these meetings. 93% um, said it enhanced their quality of life, improved treatment compliance, improved ability to communicate with their health care providers, and increased their understanding of heart disease. Um, so we know that this is having an impact on patients from clinical uh, standpoint, this is an immediate accessible support component for stronger continuity of care, patient engagement model um, to improve adherence, treatment, and lifestyle changes, um, and potential for improved cardiac outcomes and reduced readmission uh, rates. Um, hospital benefits, again, the hospitals are recognized for their commitment to um, supporting women living with heart disease, um, and it helps to increase hospital brand positioning and community visibility. Um, and also um, helps to um, you know, get out in the press and the media um, for the support of this program for, for these um, women heart patients. From a societal benefits, again, the um, community health needs assessment, um, again, the, the uh, requirement for nonprofit hospitals. Um, hospitals find this to be a great benefit um, for that uh, community program. We actually have hospitals who are launching support groups out into the community. They're not even taking place at the hospital hospital as this um, continues to grow. So I'd like to end with this slide. It's my cardiologist saved my heart, but women heart saved my life. We've heard our women heart champions say that. Um, and again, you know, really by connecting with the organization, it's a way for them to learn how to live with this chronic condition. Um, it helps to support them. Um, and I encourage you to um, become familiar with our organization if, you, if you're not aware of us, because we can help um, many women um, patients um, throughout the country um, with the many services and programs. So thank you so much again for the opportunity to be here this morning.